Let's light this up. How you guys doing? Good evening. It is Do Page Run and Shoot Show episode 5, 2022. Welcome to the show. Uh, my name is Coach Big Pete, aka Peter Lineberg, publisher of DeepDishFootball.com. Make sure you follow Coach Big Pete and Deep Dish Football on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. And my email is Coach Big Pete, FB at gmail.com. I will now give it to my lovely co host, Patrick Cotto. Mr. Cotto, say your info, sir. Hello, friends. Yes, that is right. My name is Patrick Cotto. Oh, my God. <laughs> my name is Patrick Cotto, the co-host of DuPage Run and Shoot. I am also a sports supporter at NCTV17. So go ahead and check out our content at NCTV17.org. Find me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. And if you want to email me anything, feel free to email me at Pete Cotto at NCTV17.org. Pete, let's and, light this up. And you can throw batteries at him as well. <laughs> the most famous quote on the show all Format. right <laughs> that's right let's get into week four sir st lawrence 20 montini 14 and it's starting to look like montini's montini right now oh come on now a six point loss to well, st lawrence like i know st lawrence is good but golly it's montini yeah. what are you doing um I mean, another, like, what happened? Like, you know, despite a 287-yard passing game from Cole Teshner, you know, this one hurts my team. Yeah. This one hurts. It does. It really does hurt them. And you, you suffer a loss to St. Lawrence. I see was ex- I see was expected. But that was expected. That was expected. Um, and, again, like I said, a big thing is that more, uh, Montini lost two of the weapons. They transferred. So, Josh Rob Robertson, Bolingbrook, other kid out to IMG Academy in Florida. Of course. <sighs> Montini, it's this is a big game coming. We'll talk about this still. We will. St. St. Rita 41, Bennett 12. So this game was actually somewhat close early on. Yeah. Uh, Bennett was up six to nothing. And then next thing you know, a 41 to six run by the Mustangs. Golly, what the hell happened at Bennett? You know, we thought they would give Rita a fight. No, Rita killed him. Yes. Made him alive. And I'll say this again. I don't <laughs> – I think um, Bennett caught a hot St. Rita team who's war- who's getting hot week by week by week. I f- do see Bennett making the playoffs this season. I think Well, gonna- they have a – they've got a really tough road ahead of them. Yeah. 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 Um, St. Rita is definitely a team that you guys got to know about in IHSA land. Uh, Bennett Academy, again, um, I didn't get the stats. How did the quarterback do? Um, for St. Rita or Bennett? Yeah, uh, Bennett, Bennett. Not too yeah. well. <laughs> okay. Uh, Batavia, 42, Lake Park, a zero. Is that much of a surprise? No, but the fact that Batavia needed that win. <laughs> and, again, I'm going to give a big shout-out to Batavia. They've got some younger kids that are stepping up. One kid that you must know about is a young Charlie Wepley. He is an absolute stud, multi, multi-hybrid athlete. Uh, he is going to be a star for this Batavia Bulldog team. Oh, yes. So Batavia gets the 42 over Lake Park. Again, look, Lake Park, this is the first season for new head coach. They're just getting better and better and better, and they're building something right there. Glen Bar North, 41. St. Charles East, 34. Okay, let's let's unpack a little bit about this game. First of all, for Glenbar North, the turnover bug was still bugging them. Yeah, one of their turnovers was a pick six. Mm-hmm. I mean, they were getting spanked at halftime, thirty-four to twenty-one, and then I guess Glenbar North needs to stick with their running game. Uh, Demarion Elston with one hundred eighty-three yards, six touchdowns, four touchdowns. I think he had I six think- touchdowns. No, he didn't. Okay, all right. So he had, he had a big game. He had a big game. That's for yeah. sure. But I think they need to give the rock to him more because if yeah. Lance get a struggle, then he might as well that else to yeah. get some carries. And I and I thought, <laughs> yeah, I thought Bland was going to have a big season this season again. Um, this Glenbar North team, they just keep fighting. Was this a uh, uh, was this a they were going to win this game? We sort of had an idea that, that yeah, they were going to win this game. Uh, but Glenbar North. St. Charles and, East did not make it easy. St. Yeah. Charles East did not make that. No, they game. did not. They did not make it. Well, a good game for the St. Charles East. Offense. Yes. And a game that pisses me off so much when I saw the score, pisses me off. 
St. Charles North 22, mm. Union North 21. <laughs> what the hell? Who called upset? Who called upset? Who yeah. called upset? That's I, right. I called upset. I can't believe we in North did this to St. Charles North. I was completely flabbergasted. Well, the St. Charles North missed the playoffs last year because they yeah. didn't go for two. This time, they did go for two. They're down 21-6. to six. They have momentum. They take the risk. And you know what? I love it. I love the move. Yep. And Plumbers back in quarterback need to as take well. That risk. They need yep. to take that risk of going yep. for two in the win. Big shout out to St. Charles North. That was a much needed win. You really think Again. you really think that opposing team is gonna be that nice He's saying, no, we're gonna no, try and go to no. no, we are going to kick your ass right now. Yeah, we're gonna go. lay it right in your motherfucking face right yeah. now. We're gonna go for two. Yep. That's what St. Charles North did. St. Charles North was no more Mr. Nice Guy yeah. down to, after being down 21 to 6. Agreed. Agreed. And we talk about uh just a big game, uh exciting and game. Will, and and, and Ethan Ethan Plum came back in too. Yes, which is good. Naperville, Cent- Naperville Central 35, Obanzi Valley 7, always a riveting game. <laughs> I mean, with the tough schedule that Naperville Central has coming up now, um, they need they that was a good win for them. Yes. And now comes the next big test. So really, these next two weeks, shit, three weeks. Yep. But Taya Valley continues a tough season as they lose to the Kelp 58 to 21. That is incorrect. It was 48 nothing. For, oh, 40, I'm sorry. I apologize. That That's is inc- no, Max Prep screwed something up. It was okay. 48 nothing uh, to Cap, which is 40 enough. And I apologize <laughs> for that, everyone. I do apologize. Oh, um, God. Uh, but t- t- uh, if you yeah. watch the high, if you watch the highlight of the game, it was there are a lot of what the fucks in a few plays. Mm-hmm. Um, Geneva 35, Weedon Warrenville South 11. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. 4 0 Geneva. Let's go. I know. And this Geneva team, there's just, there's an energy. Their quarterback is absolutely killing it. Taylor Taylor, absolute stud in the state of Illinois. He's got, yes. he's already picked up numerous Big Ten offers. Geneva is our, is this year's Wheat North, hopefully. I or think they class, could be. What, what class is Geneva in? 7A or 8A? Uh, if I'm not mistaken, 7A. Oh, that's. Yeah. That yeah. class is already loaded. Oh boy! And like literally, and, and like you said, and I completely agree. Geneva has a chance of being that type of Weeden North team that was last year when Weeden North was absolutely blanking some of the best Chicago Catholic schools. And again, yeah. young energy. I loved it. And Geneva, and it started with the hiring of the head, the head, the head coach. Uh, I think it was like two years ago. So you could say the same thing move. about them as like a Lockport and a um, yeah. Lockport and a Main South. Yeah. And Any public school that had an unbelievable season last year. That's why I'm saying, and again, we, uh, we'll talk about this game later, but Geneva's got two important games coming up with rivals, so it's definitely going to be big. It's definitely mm. going to be big. Yeah. Nequa Valley 27. God damn. Naperville 16. What the hell, photo? I mean, off – I mean – the Huskies definitely did sleep on the Wildcats. People are thinking, no Medici, no problem. Uh, not as long as Bill Ellinghouse has the playbook in his hand. Yeah. <laughs> does, <laughs> you, you, do, do, quick question. Do the Naperville schools, the Naperville football programs, do they um, get together and say, hey, you know what? Let's just screw up the conference and just beat the living ever living crap out of each other. And then we get into the playoffs so we can get an early exit. <laughs> I mean, well, that was the case for Central and North last year. Nico obviously made to the quarters, but um, I mean, it's it's still should, early to be quite. They, yeah, they should have a meeting, and they should said who's going to be the good team, who's going to be the mild average team, and we can get a good shot. But no, we're just going to be the living ever living crap. Well, out of I each mean, other. we'll see how these next two weeks go. Obviously, Central hosts Nico, then Central plays North, so. Yeah, we'll see. We'll, we'll we'll find out a couple of weeks who the I guess who the equi- yeah. I mean, we'll find out a couple of weeks to see you know yep. of that question. <laughs> Lyle beats Streeter 35-28. A must win for Lyle over the Bulldogs. A high they almost blew game. that game. Yes, they did. They almost blew that. Game. You're up twenty seven to six in the fourth quarter. Put the damn thing away. I forgot oh the my God. I forgot the kid's name, but Streeter honestly. Streeter has a big dog 
quarterback. I forgot his name. He's having a great season. And all they just got to get together. But Streeter could be a huge, huge team. Well, the, well, then I was saved by Dominic Negro and uh, Tony DeWald, who had a combined 224 rushing yards. And Tony DeWald is a sophomore, and he's a rising sophomore from those Lyle Lions. Um, Wheaton Academy, 47, Bishop Max Zero. Wheaton Academy is just chugging along. We are literally on the ass whooping around right now, starting with Wheaton Academy, business as usual. They are, uh, they're just, they're, uh, I, I don't have any words from them. They're, they're looking unbelievable. I see 3055 Ridgewood 7. Ooh, a tough game. Ooh. Riveting, riveting how about, game. How about that? Good game. St. Francis 56, Chicago Christian 0. Ooh, how about that game? Love to see it. <laughs> Glenbarn East 42, East Aurora 0. Oh, boy. Glenbarn East. Uh... Yep. Yep. And then we get into another upset, Elgin 24, Bartlett 7. First win for the Maroons over Bartlett since, get this, 2001. <laughs> I did not know that. Wow. <laughs> <sighs> yeah, 2001. Unbelievable. That's just that, – that, I couldn't believe the score. I thought Bartlett would hit the hot hand. I thought they were going to win this game. Um, but And Bar Bartlett's got a tough game with conference opponent this week. Um, so <sighs> – was it a little bit of overlooking an opponent? I would have to agree so. Yeah. Because uh, Bartlett's got Glenbard South coming up. You know, they're mm -hmm. thinking, okay, we'll just focus on Glenbard South. We'll beat the shit yeah. out of this team. You know that yeah. team beats the shit out of you. Yep. And we got the big first game winner. Fenton beats West Chicago 27-26. God damn it. I want to watch Chicago to win. Me too. I want to watch Chicago to win as well. Coach Chavez, they'll get it. They'll get it. Don't worry. Uh, Good effort, though. Great effort. Great effort. A great game. Big shout out to the Fenton Bison as they get the big first big win of the season for them. Um, and so, again, good job. Um, DGS, 28. Willowbrook, 13. Willowbrook has got zero wins still. And, yeah, and that first – and, that, yeah, Downers Grove South finally gets the juice going. So. I, <laughs> well, what's funny – well, what's funny, too – it was close at one point, you know. Yeah. DGS is up 14 13. Uh, Will Potter got it started with an interception, and then next thing you know, the Mustang score the next 14 ball game over. Can DGS fix the magic like they did the last year? Can they do that last year? I don't think they can. Yeah, we'll see. No. depends on who they have next. <laughs> Glumbard self 49. Streamwood 20. Big surprise oh, there. no surprise at all, but Michael Champagne and Jalen Brown are doing their thing. Yep. And J Michael Champagne. 509 just... yards of total offense. For the yeah. Raiders and, and, just to, and just to say this right now, that um, that Roosevelt Road, that, that area right now, not Roosie, but the, I can say Butterfield Road and Roosie, um, but – Michael Champagne, Belay Brummel of Wheaton Academy, Alessio of St. Francis are having a hell of a season. So those three guys are having a hell of a season. <laughs> so, um, Addison Trail, 23, provides at least 20. Big surprise. I, no, but I think Addison Trail needs to keep playing East team so they can keep winning. <laughs> they get two wins. They have two yeah, wins so on the play, season. They, they, they need to they need to play East Aurora. They need to play somewhere out East. Keep, just keep playing seats in the East and you'll win. Congratulations yes. to you guys. Big uh, two, no, two that's games a good so thing. far. That's the, the, the fact that, you know, Addison Trail, after win, a winless season last year, Yeah, this is this is good. This is good so far. Glumbard West, 51, Proviso West 12, surprised? Nope. Glumbard West being Glumbard West. New day, same shit. Yep. York 24, DGN uh, 17, deep dish football game of the week. Oh, overtime, boy. great game in overtime. York is your victors. DGN still a hell of a team, but York, they played fast, and I was very impressed uh, with Coach Fitzgerald and his offensive scheme. Mitch catch only the first quarter, but big shout-out to York football. That is an important win. And Cam – Damian Glads kicks the game-tying field goal. Yes. And the Winner, uh, you know, um, uh, came from uh, Kelly Watson, and uh, Kelly Watson two touchdowns. Their linebacker from York 
had a tremendous game, forced fumble, a sack. He had a big time game. I think it was like 14 tackles, three tackles for losses, but great game again uh, to uh, York in overtime. Hinsdale Central, 16, Hinsdale South, 7. Hinsdale Central gets the must-needed win. Oh, boy. Big shout-out to Coach McHugh. Um, and there was a uh, fighting uh, Red Devils. Coach Griffin, well-deserved win. Um, and, again, Hinsdale Central, I, I really do – and I was asked this question today at the at the local Jewels of Westmont. Can Hinsdale Central make the playoffs? I believe they can make it into the playoffs, and I think they can do some damage. But, again, the big thing uh, yes. is quarterbacks. So. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah, I was going <laughs> to say, what will they do with both Sir Nugal and Monaghan? Yeah. No, you're right. Um, IHSC games week uh, four, Mount Carmel 42 minutes seven. What the? <laughs> Sorry. Mount Carmel is looking scarier than ever. What's well, funny? Well, what's funny too, this game looked like a defensive battle because it was scoreless yeah. after the first. Yeah. Uh, not anymore. Then all no. of a sudden, Mount Carmel is Mount Carmel. Yeah. Just I, that, everyone. I was completely flabbergasted by this score. <laughs> Well, the fact that, you know, these are two, you know, Chicago teams that just absolutely fucking hate each other, first yes. of all. Like, they don't, like, in their school, they don't even say the school name. They just say yeah. the address. Yeah. They just say the address of the school. They say, nope, we're going to this address right here. Yeah. They say the same thing. We're going to this address right here. Yeah. Now, Carmel yep. kicks the shit out of that address. Yep. Carmel 28, St. Viter 14. Oh, boy. You know, Carl had themselves a 14-7 lead going into the fourth quarter, and then they were, they were able to put it away in the end. Brian and Weber looked good. Thing. And Carmel, yes, again, is. Carmel is undefeated. The Caravan are undefeated. They have a game against Nazareth Academy. Corsairs. Car- Corsairs. Corsairs, sorry. What I, dumb, dumb, dumb. Yes, Corsairs. I'm, thank you, Mr. Cotto, for the uh, correction. <laughs> but Carmel, yes, 28-14. Jacobs forty two Prairie Ridge thirty five Jacobs is on top of the oh Fox boy this LA baby conference had, this baby had some fireworks Pete this baby had some fireworks fourteen all at the end of one but Tyler Tyler Vassy from Prairie Ridge yeah not one but two kick returns not one but two in the first quarter unbelievable it was and- a, it was a it was, it was an expected matchup right here. And the fact that, you know, sometimes sometimes to beat the good teams, the offense needs to be unleashed. Jacobs' offense was definitely unleashed. Yeah, and I I was a little bit shocked by the squad because I thought Prairie Ridge was going to win this game. I, and, I think Ashton Chris, Nia, and Ashton Nyhouse with the game-winning tackle to see the yes. nickel. And again, I think, <laughs> again, Prairie Ridge has got another tough game next week. But Jacobs uh, being yeah, on top – yeah, Jacob was being on top of the Fox Valley. Coach Sims got that team rolling pretty well. Um, and I really think that Jacobs most likely is going to win that uh, win the title, the Fox Valley Conference title. O'Fallon, 32, Edwardsville, 31. O'Fallon gets the win. They are undefeated. Wow. Uh, now that's another game that we expected to be good. Yeah. O'Fallon. They were they were losing a lot in this game. Yeah. They were they they were down by ten at one point. Then they're down by fourteen. And Colt Michael, which by the way, that is a fucking badass name. Colt Michael, yeah. love that name. Four hundred and four big ones. Yeah. TDs. Jalen Smith and Christian Joyner were his go to targets. Three hundred and twenty two receiving yards combined. And guess what? They also went for two in the win. Yeah, and Colt and Colt Michael is an absolute star quarterback in the state of Illinois. Edwardsville again. They've there's some young players. They got a lot of young star players. They're gonna make a run. Is They're this the year that we could potentially? Is this the year that we could potentially see a big school from down south besides East St. Louis? Yes, and I totally agree. That was a great. No, you are completely right. Um, I'm talking. I'm talking big school. I'm not talking those small schools. No, no, I'm no. The, I'm talking big schools. I think the some small schools, schools got a shot too. I think Southern Illinois is going to go. Is going to get. We're the talking record. a big. We're talking a yeah. big dog down there. That yep. big dog besides East St. Louis or Fallon, they could depending yeah. on teams as well. They could give teams up here some serious trouble. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Richmond Burden thirty three. Normal West twenty six. Richmond Burden with the big win over a tough normal West defense. 
Big shout out to Richmond Barton. They're looking unbelievable again at this season. As usual, you know, t- tied at 26. Richmond Burton got that last stop for the touchdown. All right. So we get into the games of the week for week five, New Page games, and after that, the IHSA games. Here we go. We in Warrenville South, St. Charles East. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Glenbar North and Batavia. I apologize first. So another much must win situation. For Glenbar North, same thing goes Batavia. Yeah. Here's my here's my thing. The turnover bug is still biting Glenbar yeah. North. Batavia got their swagger back. I think Batavia. Batavia steals it over Glenbar North. And like you said, Glenbar North has got to they gotta get rid of that. They have to clean up the turnovers. It, it's been a turnover mess. All year long, even in their win last week, they had a pick six. Yes. They gave up a pick six. This Glenbar North team is literally in turnover hell right now. Yeah. You cannot – you're not going to win football games if you're going to turn the ball over. I'm sorry. You, but, no, you're right. You're right. And, uh, it gives and Batavia, point. they are too good. They are definitely a, have a good – they definitely have that good defense that can give Glenbar North some fits. I'm going Batavia on this one. And if, like I said, if Glenbard North can get over that 3.5 um, um, yards per rush against the Batavia team, watch out. And they could, they could, they could shock Batavia. But the turnovers, and I, I got to agree. You have to clean up. You have to clean those up. And then, literally, this is what's going to happen. Glenbard North's going to win a game, and they're going to make us look like jackasses again. Could be this week. Who, who knows? <laughs> it, could, it could be this week. Um, I'm sure we're gonna have a nice little message DM from a coach saying you were saying about our defense. Yes, <laughs> we in Warrenville. Bring it on, we're right yep. here. We in Warrenville South versus St. Charles East. Okay, this is a must-win situation for both teams. Yeah, although St. Charles East, St. Charles East just got the ball rolling on their offense. Yes, it's a good Glenbar North team, St. Charles East, because in their first few games, you know. Um, against Wabonzi Valley, they, their offense struggled, only put up 10 points, where a team like Wabonzi is, you know, completely, you know, completely worse than St. Charles East. Yeah. You know, hopefully, you know, this this keeps going for the Saints with their offense. Yeah. You know, St. Charles East, I think that – I think – I'm going to go St. Charles East on this one. You know, they put up 28 on Lincoln Way Central, 10 on Wabonzi, you know, tough break for the offense against Lake Park. They get the ball rolling on Lombard North. I think, though, I think St. Charles East takes it. I'm I'm going to I'm gonna go with those Tigers. I think the Tigers can win this game. But, again, they got to neutral- go neutral- either way. They got to neutralize that offensive line of East. Um right. Naperville Central versus Nequa Valley High School, sir. You've got the inside dirt, sir. I will be there tomorrow as well. So, Naperville Central. So, the Red Ox are 3 1 of the year. You know, um, decent wins. You know, the good one over Hinsdale Central, the tough loss to Plainfield North. Apparently, this team they beat for Wisconsin apparently isn't that good. Yeah. High school football in Wisconsin isn't even that good at all. Well, Bonzi, I mean, well, Bonzi, although, although I will say this, though, well, Bonzi Valley did turn over Naperville Central on their first possession. Yeah. I mean, obviously, well, Bonzi Valley couldn't capitalize on it, but ah, Naperville Central, they, they need to pull out the magic tricks tomorrow against Nikwa. Because all okay. they did last week was just run, run, run with Tyler Dodd and have Chris McCormick run a lot. Okay. That's not good. That's not gonna work every week. Okay. Okay. They need they, they need they need the essential needs its magic tricks. And right. for Nico's offense, I feel like too that, you know. So they tested out their offense against, you know, a good Naples North defense, who have given up the most points so far this year after giving up Sheesh, <laughs> after giving up, you know, 20 in week one, 13 in week two, uh, 13 in week three. I think um, there's going to be a lot of gadgets in this play. 
in, the, in this game. There's gonna, this game's gonna be full of gadget plays, especially for Nico, since you know you're moving things around on offense. This game's also gonna come down to the turnover battle. Mm-hmm. That's what I feel like it is. And nobody, and I mean nobody in this game, gets past 20. I won't even be surprised if this goes to another overtime. Because it's gonna be that kind of game between okay. Central and Nico. Because that Nico win last week against Naples North just all of a sudden opened up the door in the DVC. Just all of a sudden opened up the door for the DVC. And DeKalb winning last week yeah. opened up the door. So if Central beats Nico tomorrow, there could be – the DVC could all of a sudden be up for grabs. Yeah. Depending on how things go tomorrow. Yeah. With me. It's going to be a really good game. So if you guys see uh, Mr. Cotto at the game, make sure you throw batteries at him. Yes, yes. Nequa ne- fans, go watch <laughs> all the people. I will be there. I will. I, I mean, you know, I won't be surprised whoever wins tomorrow. <laughs> it's going to be close. Yes, Nequa Central. I am right here. Please go ahead. Throw batteries at the guy with the camera. Will Bonzi Valley versus Matea Valley? Can Matea Valley get a win? Yeah, I have no idea. Their defense is, yeah, but so is Wilbonzi's offense. Yeah, Wilbonzi's offense is going up against a shit defense tomorrow, so that game could have some fireworks. I agree. I think this. I think that's going to be. It's going to be a hell of a game. But you um, know who I think? You but you know if I'm if I'm going to pick a winner, yeah, Wilbonzi gets that first win on the oh, season. Okay, okay. Saint Francis versus Champaign Central. Saint Francis. St. Francis. They better not overlook the Maroons. I'm telling you that right now. They got to have Oh, yeah. Shit. I've actually I have actually I've actually gotten a chance to see Champagne Central one year playing against Carbondale. And that's a good ass football team. Yeah, yeah. Glenbart South versus Bartlett. Raiders. Raiders. Yeah. I think Michael Champagne's gonna continue success. Yes. Hins- Hinsdale self versus Morton. Who's the favorite in this game? Uh, <laughs> you got to give it a little bit to Hinsdale Self, but I think Morton can get the upset. I was going to say, upset alert indeed, Morton. Yep. Lions versus York, the big game in the West Suburban Conference. You know, York's been just clicking a lot lately. I think York could take it. Yeah. And again, like I said, Ryan Jackson, he's having a hell of a season. Um, and that York secondary, I'm sorry, the Lions secondary has been unbelievable this se- uh, season so yes. far. Continued success. Um, OPRF versus Hinsdale Central. Both teams need to win. Yeah. I'm going upset alert. Yeah. You know, OPRF, they've been a surprising team a lot. I think they could surprise people tomorrow against Hinsdale oh. Central. Ryan McHugh, please kick his ass in. Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna think this is a tough fuck game, and I'm gonna go with Hinsdale Central. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. Um, if I'm wrong, well, Ryan, you know, you, you, you know where to find me. <laughs> Cole City versus Lyle. God, Lyle needs that win. Yes, they do. Cole City's a tough team, man. Yep. It's just going to be up in the air, and I got a feeling this is going to be like one of those really wild ice games that we've always seen. Um, right, Cole City's defense is is warming up these these past weeks, but again, Lyle, the big thing is what can they do with that passing attack? So we'll see what happens. Yes. Um, Bennett versus Marion. Uh, Bennett needs to split two tomorrow, and Marion's playing some good football, by the way. So, and the game is at Marion Central Catholic. Yeah, so well, I don't think that's gonna steamroll them. It's gonna be close. Yep. And everyone's gonna laugh at this game, but Montini lost last year to him. Leo versus Montini. I thought I thought Montini beat him last year. Oh, the Mont- oh Montini did one. I'm sorry, I apologize. Barely though. 39 yes. 32. So can he get the revenge, <laughs> Leo? Well, I would love to see it. So I think I think it's gonna be I think Montini they can't overlook Leo like they did last no. year. All right, IHSA Games of the Week. O'Fallon wins, and guess who they get next week, this week? East St. Louis. I'm going another upset. I'm going another upset. I'm going O'Fallon. O'Fallon upset him two years ago in the uh, spring. 
Exactly. That game and that game was a shocking one, 28 to 19. Yes. They so, do it again. They I, do it again. I'm I'm not gonna I the game is this game is gonna be good. This is a big time game for O'Fallon. This is also a big time game for East St. Louis. Oh if O'Fallon if O'Fallon wins this game, oh Holy my shit. god, then then if yeah. O'Fallon wins this, then the schools up here really gotta be scared of the big dog down south. All right, and Geneva's got St. Charles North. I'm going to the Vikings. They keep rolling. St. Charles North, they the, the plum he's got he, he's back under center. He's got uh some confidence. Um, this is gonna be it's gonna be a tough game. This is the biggest proving point for Geneva. This game really the, the biggest, biggest proven point. point for both teams. Yes, yes. Uh Prairie Ridge versus Kerry Grove. Prairie Ridge is gonna die by that triple option. <laughs> Hey, it's going to be a tough fought game. Yes. I think, um, again, I think this is going to be one of the, again, big time games in the state of Illinois. And I know it's boring to a lot of people that love the pass. So it's a good game. Um, Lake Zurich versus Warren Township. Ooh, this is a good one, too. 4 0 Warren versus 3 1 Lake Zurich. Um, oh, that's, this is tough. Who's the favorite of this game? Warren, I assume. Yeah. Let's go upset. Why not? Lake Zurich. It's just that this game, it just screams again. Um, they get, Lake Zurich has got a hell of a kicker. He's got ice in his effing veins. He's killing it. He's a kicker on fire. Warren Township, awesome secondary. You want to see more from their quarterback. It's This is going to be a tough luck game, and it all depends on Lake Zurich's Ashton Gundek. Hit the star, Ashton Gundek, the quarterback. Transfer from Carmel, he has to have a big game against these Blue Devils. Next game, Bolingbrook versus Lincoln Way East. Oh, I love this game right here. Can Bolingbrook you know get the upset? I'm... Nope, the Griffins are going to get him. Yeah, they got to stop to, uh, to share. And uh, Bolingbrook, yes. their freshman quarterback, I think Lincoln Way East is going to put pressure on him, and I think the Zovner knows it. Next one, small school star game, big game of the st- in the state of Illinois for 1A. Ottawa Marquette takes on Chicago Hope Academy. Both teams are undefeated. Both teams love their offense, too. So I guess this game is going to come down to who can win the turnover yes. battle. And but both, we see any turnovers. And for a small school game, both teams feature uh, three Division One athletes as well. Mullins at tight end, 6'5 tight end for Ottawa Marquette. Um, his brother plays at Louisville as a tight end. And uh, oh, Chicago no Academy, yeah, Chicago Academy. They got a uh, a DB who I believe just commit to Ball State, and they got another guy that's uh, that's uh, getting some offers too. So again, this is going to be a big time small school game. St. Patrick versus St. Rita. Oh, you know, St. Rita's offense is clicking now. Yeah, we were talking about that they're hot right now. I think St. Rita gets it. Agreed. I think St. Rita's going to win this game, but St. Patrick, Coach Martins has got this team again believing it's going to be a tough game, but I, I tend to agree with you. I think St. Rita's already on roll. They're on fire, and Cody, you said it correctly. Like they, they're they catching fire right now. Um, Rochester versus Glenwood. All right, we're finally back on good old um, good old Derek Leonard. Now, last time we talked, they lost. Back yeah. Shit, the last two times we talked, they lost. You know what? Leonard gets a win. Let's go, Derek. Let's I think this is – I think the, the youth on Rochester and I think Glenwood, the, just what they have with Dwyer running back, their quarterback, Newton, who's having a hell of a season too. This game is just – there's just so many intangibles. that like really <laughs> – um, Glenwood, they're, they're hungry for a state title. Rochester, the youth um, – I'm going to go a little bit of Glenwood. If I'm wrong, throw batteries at me. I'll look and, like and, well, for, well, this will be, that would be big for Glenwood, too, because you yes. you're talking about state titles. you okay. got to beat one of the big dogs, and one of the big dogs is definitely Rochester. Yep. And the last game of the week, Hersey versus Prospect. You know, Prospect just came off of an upset win over Maine South. Yeah, I think prospect, you know, 
But their biggest win of the year against Maine South, <laughs> I think Prospect gives Hersey some trouble. I think her. I think Hersey and Prospect. This is another big game. Prospect again, awesome wide receivers. Hersey, how does that de- their secondary handle Prospect's passing attack? Um, Colton Camino's got to have a game. He's got to ball out. They'll transfer from York. He's got a ball out for Hersey. This right. is going to be a big time game. Um, and I think again, trench warfare is going to be huge in this game. Um, especially if prospects offensive line. I, this is another game up in the air to me. So we go to questions. Henry from St. Charles, who wins the DuPage Valley Conference? Who wins the DuPage Valley Conference? Jesus Christ, we're only one week into conference play. It's a good question. I'll say the Eco Valley. Oh. Well, the cats have been the cats have been pulling out tricks since Medici went down. They just beat Naperville North last week. Again, as long as Ellinghouse is holding that playbook, Nequa is going to be Nequa. Naperville Central, that is your alumni, Patrick Cotto. He will be <laughs> at the game uh, tomorrow night. Please throw batteries at him. I'm still going to go with my boys, the Naperville North Huskies, Coach Arthur, the defensive coordinator, Coach Drendel, top coach in the state of Illinois. I've got my faith in those Naperville North Huskies. I think they I'm can win. I'm not going to Naperville North. We North didn't win the Duquesne Conference last year, and look what they did. <laughs> We didn't win the DVC. We won the state title. Yes, true. Because you don't win conference doesn't mean shit. It means a lot, sir. It means a lot. You get a nice white T-shirt that says conference t- winners. Okay, but <laughs> yeah, but right. that state T-shirt's a lot nicer. Oh last uh, last question from uh, Carolyn Wiki of Elmhurst. Who has the best pizza in DuPage County? <laughs> Easy, little Italian, little Italian pizza. There's a lot of good places actually in Peach <laughs> County. Honestly, oh yeah, Luminati's, Giordano's. Um, ah, that was a deep dish. Um, Aurelio's. Hey, please tell me you've had Aurelio's. I like Papa Bazaro's from Westmont. LNF Pizza. People say it's good. I'm a big. Hey, I'm a big pizza slut. I'm not gonna lie to you. You can see by the size of me that I'm a pizza slut. <laughs> for me, uh, have you I, have you had little Have you had little Italian pizza before? Where's it at? Uh, so it's 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 a Naperville pizza. It's in Naperville. Yes, uh, I have. Of- I, yeah, I think I have. Yeah, yeah. It's good, right? It's good, right? Yes, it is. Uh, Rosati's. I love. I I'm a huge oh, fan Rosati's of Rosati's. Is good. Oh, Rosati's has got that south side. Now. Yeah. Rosais has got that it's typical Connecticut style slash cell side type of thing. I'm a big fan of pub pizza. I don't like deep dish pizza. How sorry, dare sorry. you? <laughs> oh, Lou Malnati's that is Coach Big Pete. You see him <laughs> throw batteries at him for this. Damn pizza. right. All right, and thank you guys so much for joining episode five of Page Run and Shoot. My name is Peter Lambert, aka Coach Big Pete of Deep Dish Football, sir. Please. Get, oh, and email Coach Big Pete, FPG, Melicom, follow Coach Big Pete, Deep Dish Football on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. You, sir, go ahead. Everyone, Patrick Coe, the co host of Dream Page Run Shoot. Follow me on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and um, yeah, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. If you got any emails, email me at Pete Coe on nctv17.com and check out our content, nctv17.org. Excuse me. Mm-hmm.